in this course, EDU 184, Introduction to Early Childhood Practicum, you'll be doing a practicum in a uh, daycare or school experience. Since this program is accredited through the National Association for the Education of Young Children, hereafter called NACE or NAEYC, we have to follow their rules for practicum. When you think about practicum, think about that as an internship or student teaching or field experience. NACI says that um, during your time here, you have to have two different types of settings for your field experience and two different age groups for your field experience. So I want to help define those for you as NACI defines them for us. The settings, um, in the settings category, there are three categories. The first one is a family child care home that's licensed and has three star rating or higher, or a child care center that has three stars and higher and that's licensed. Those are considered one type of setting. So when you have two field experiences, you cannot do one in a family child care home and one in a child care center because they're considered the same type of setting. So for these to be accurate, they must be licensed by the state of North Carolina. They must have a star rating of three stars or higher, so that we three, four, or five stars. You cannot do it in a center that has one or two stars. And the center cannot be under investigation. I can help you with that if you um, have a question about the center, I can look it up for you. The second type of setting is a program type. So it might be what we call NC Pre-K, which used to be North Carolina's program called More at Four. It's a uh, funded four-year-old preschool program, and you will see that in some daycare centers and um, some public schools also have those uh, More at Four programs or NC Pre-K programs. You can also do it in a Montessori program. Um, Reggio Emilia program, which is an approved program, we don't have any in our area, but if you're taking this practicum in another area, there might be one in your area. Or you can also have an approved church preschool type program. Um, some churches have just a preschool program, no daycare or anything associated with it, um, where the children get dropped off in the morning and picked up around noontime. Um, those kinds, if they're not monitored by the state, have to be approved by me, so you need to let me know and I need to know something about that center. So if it's a licensed facility, um, for example, it might be an NC Pre-K or it might be a Montessori school that's licensed, then they have to have all the same rules about licensure. However, some um, organizations are not required to be licensed, such as churches. Churches have a different sort of licensure. They have um, to be monitored by their health and sanitation, but they don't have to be monitored by the state. And so um, those particular ones, if they choose to be licensed, um, have to have the same licensing standards. If they are not licensed, then I need to approve them. The third category is public school or private school. And this is for kindergarten through grade two. NAEYC defines early childhood as birth through age eight. The school can be up through 12th grade, but the classroom that you go in can only be kindergarten or first grade or second grade. It can't be above second grade. So the public school requires special permission. Here in Craven County, we have a special um, way that they do that, and so you should not contact the public school yourself. You should contact me and tell me which school you would like to have permission to go to and which age group, and then we contact the school. It's for security reasons that they make us do it this way. Um, you, if you want to go to a private school, such as a private Christian school, you need to let me know which one that is. Some schools are approved, some are not. Um, some private schools have a different accreditation. And so I need to look at what their accreditation is and what their standards are before I can approve it. So there are three settings, and you need to, in your field experiences here, your practicum here at Craven Community College, you need to choose two of those categories. While you're in your program here, you'll be doing a two practicum. One is an EDU 184, and that's for 48 hours. One is an EDU 284, which is at the very end of all your educational classes, 
and that's for 144 hours. So um, they need to be in two different settings. Now let's talk about age groups. NACI defines age groups in three different categories. The first one is, called, is infants, toddlers, and twos, or infants through 35 months, not yet three years old. Um, the second one is preschool, and preschool is defined as age three or 36 months to age five, but not in school yet, not in kindergarten yet. And the last one is school age, which is um, kindergarten through age eight or grade two. So during your practicum experiences, you will have to have two different settings and two different age groups. You, it's possible for you to do um, an extra practicum, which is an early, excuse me, an infant toddler and two practicum, but that's an elective. So that's an addition to this. Some things to think about when planning your practicum. Your practicum in EDU 184, like I said, is 48 hours. That's your short practicum. It's an introduction. It's a time where you go and observe, you document, I teach you how to do different types of assessments, um, and you work with children in small groups. EDU 284, your capstone, the final practicum you do, is 144 hours. That's what I call the big practicum. That one you do is more like student teaching. You're going to actually um, take over the class in some days. And so um, it's important for you to think about when you're planning where you want to do your practicum, where do you want to do your big practicum? Because you don't want to be limited um, by the setting or the age group because of your first practicum. Um, some things to think about while planning. If you work at an approved facility for practicum and you want to do your practicum at that site, as long as it is approved and meets the criteria, you can do it there. If you work full time, you probably want to do your 144 hour practicum there. You cannot do your 48 hour practicum and your 144 hour practicum at the same site with the same age group. So be thinking about, since this is your first practicum, where could you do your practicum that is other than um, the classroom that you're in? So here's an example. You work at a child care center full time. You want to do your practicum at that site, but you um, can't do both your practicums there. So since it's a child care center that qualifies in the category of, uh, your second site cannot be a family child care home since they're considered the same type of site you would choose from category two or three. The one exception to this is NC Pre-K, and if NC Pre-K is housed in the child care center, then that's considered a second type of site, and that would be approved as a child care site. Your supervisor. Your supervisor should have a minimum of associate's degree in early childhood education or a related field. The supervisor is the person that's going to observe you, that's going to sign off on your timesheets, but also is going to perform the evaluations on you. In some select circumstances, a supervisor may not have a degree, but the, they may be close to earning a degree. Your supervisor should always have more education than you and more experience than you. If you are a lead teacher in your own classroom, your director should be able to supervise you. But if for some reason she does not meet the qualifications, then you need to contact me and I'll make arrangements for your supervision. If you are an owner of your own family child care home, contact me and I also will make arrangements for your supervision. There are some requirements for practicum. One of them is a background check. You're required to have a background check and if you have a felony conviction, you cannot do your practicum and cannot graduate from this program. If you have a misdemeanor co conviction, you will have to appeal to the North Carolina Division of Child Development for approval. And if the misdemeanor is related to child safety issues, it's likely that you will be denied. If you do um, not complete the practicum, you cannot graduate from this program. Background checks can be obtained online, and I've been told that it, they cost $26. You have to have a fingerprint check. You can obtain a fingerprint check at Craven County, in Craven County from Newburgh Police Department or at the Craven County Sheriff's Office. I've been told Craven County Sheriff's Office will do them at any time and they cost $5. And I've been told that Newburgh Police Department does them on Wednesdays from 9 to noon and from 1 to 3 and they charge $10.
you have to have a TB test if you are at a Head Start facility. TB tests can be obtained at your local doctor's office or you can get them at the Craven County Health Department. All of these requirements must be completed prior to beginning your practicum, as well as completing the documents that are in the practicum form folder in Moodle. They also need to be completed before you begin your practicum.